Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and let's try Retro Game Crunch. It's by the studio that's going by the same name, Retro Game Crunch, I think. I wasn't able to find any different game company names, so I'm just going to call them Retro Game Crunch. It's a seven retro games in one package. You can pick it up for $14.99 on a developer's page, DRM free. They actually had a successful Kickstarter and they've actually been greenlit as well. However, I could not find a release date as to when that game is going to be available on Steam. I'm also not sure if you purchase the game on the developer's website, if you'll get D if you'll get Steam keys once it's available on Steam, you might want to check on their page uh, for that. I couldn't find any information. Regardless, it does have controller support and it is on a PC and Mac. First up, before we get into anything, I want to say that if there's any graphical weirdness that I don't point out specifically, it could be because I'm having to record this. I'm having to kind of do a hackneyed way to get this to record. So I apologies for that. Again, if, I, if there's any weirdness graphically, assume it's my recording software and not the game itself. What we're gonna do is, since it's a little bit of a difference, let's try, and there's seven mini games, I'm gonna pop into each one and briefly talk about it. I'll kind of continue where I already left off so you can kind of see what that game has in store for you. So first we are going to try Super Clue Land. As you can see, Retro Game Crunch presents, so that's why I think they actually are calling themselves Retro Game Crunch as well. So let's hop on into this. We're going to do, um, well, actually, this game is kind of important to see where we started from. So let's go ahead and go with the new game. It's going to erase our old game. Let's cancel that real quick, and we'll actually pick this up from where I was, and then I'll make a new game just so you can kind of see uh, what to expect, but also how you start off, because how you start is kind of important. As you can see, I can fly, and at the bottom left, I have an endurance meter. So we're going to have to go out this way. I already know it's to the right. I, I, and I don't want to, I hate to start off with a negative right off the bat. But one thing I did not like was I apparently reached where you're supposed to eventually go. You're, in this game, you're, you start off as this little slug thing and you eat various enemies and you evolve. So I have evolved the ability to swim, to fly. I've got the horn on my head to break stones, things like that. You also go around this map and you pick up these various gems. You see at the top there, I've gotten three out of like seven of them. So once you get those, you go back to this one area to hand them in, or I guess place them in an altar, and then I'm assuming something happens. Well, the problem is I got to that altar place, did not have all the stones, and I was trapped there. I could not find any way around it. Now those bananas or whatever those are, those actually refill your endurance. And that can be handy when you're trying to fly up pretty high. You can also just land and wait. But obviously when you're trying to get up high here, you want to use the bananas. I'm calling them bananas. I don't know if that's what they actually are. But we're going to fly around the map and we're basically just looking for, like I say, those stones. So we can take them back and trigger whatever it is that happens. Ooh. Wow, we cannot fly that high. Hmm, okay. But this is kind of, again, the more the end game. This is a one hit kill, so if I touch anything, I immediately die. I think it keeps that with my deaths as well, I think. I, uh, it keeps it with my time, overall time and my overall death count, which is always good. I always want to be reminded of how many times I've died. So let's go ahead and just pop back out to the beginning. We're going to start a new game. I'm going to override our old, or wish you could have more than one save file, but I guess it's not a big deal. Again, I am using the controller. This game, I I played a few games with just the keyboard, and it was fine. Some of them, though, and I'll talk about those later, didn't work out too well. Now, here I'm just a blob. I can't jump, I can't attack, can't do anything, but you find these little worms, and it starts a little mini game. Now, this is my stomach. I have to push these little beads to wherever they match. I use the right thumbstick for that. Uh, this I discard because it doesn't match anything. It was an orange. Blue will go up. All right, now my stomach is empty, but I can't jump, so I have to go this way. I have to look for these. Look out for these. You can't jump over them. And we have an orange, which, again, doesn't match anything. I'm going to put this green bead to the right. And our evolution bar goes up. And once our evolution bar is filled up, as you might imagine, 
we, well, evolve. As you can also see at the top there, there's two different colors. That means we need to match, uh, we have to match the whatever the bottom color is first. So if I had to put a green up there first, it wouldn't work. And of course, now I'm just gonna get nothing but oranges. These food things do respawn, which is pretty nice. Oh, see, now we've, we've evolved, and what do we get? Oh, we've gotten legs, or feet, I don't know. A little bit of both, I guess. Now we need a new food source. So you can, once you find an area where food spawns, you can just keep eating them. But now worms aren't enough. We've evolved to the point where worms just don't give us enough sustenance. So now we have to find the next creature or the next thing we need to eat to evolve. And it's interesting because you are giving a lot of different areas you can go to uh, oh, in these. Oh, and this is just to show us that, hey, eventually we should be able to fly. I don't know who that was, maybe another of our weird race, but these flowers will save so that if I die, I will resurrect at that flower. It also lose any progress. So for example, if I eat this and then die, I don't know why that splatted, but uh, if I grab that food, what? I thought that was orange. I will lose all the progress I made. Now see, uh, some of the food seems to respawn. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't quite understand that but uh, it is what it is. So I can't really kill any enemies, I just have to avoid them and get as much food as possible so that I can evolve. And here I can't get in the water because I will die, but of course that's another evolution. Tab oh, it's telling me to hit tab. Uh, I'm hitting tab on the keyboard. You can also hit uh, start on your controller. I'm using a PS4 controller with the... Hmm. Uh, let's see, you meant to do that. Sometimes it can be a little annoying when you can't get the colors you want, especially when you're down like one color and it keeps giving you the ones you don't want. That can be a bit frustrating. But in a nutshell, this game is eating things and evolving and unlocking new areas. Now, if there's a way to break these blocks downwards, I don't know. You get a horn, eventually it lets you break them like if you ram into them from the side or from below. But I haven't been able to figure out if you can actually do it from, from up top. And I've gotten, as far as I know, all of the evolutions. The the form that you saw, I believe, was my final form. So we're going to kind of save. And I mostly just run around trying to find things to eat until I can get enough, oops, to move on to new areas. Like, see, I can't break in there. See, now the food's, or this food is responding. Oops, I accidentally destroyed that. Or else we would have evolved. We'll do one more evolution, I guess. Ah. Keeps, I keep forgetting to get rid of that. Uh, we need one more green. I think maybe only some of the food respawns. I don't know. All right. Okay, that'll let us evolve. I think we might get the horn. Oh no, this gives us the the fish tail, which allows us to swim. Get out of the way. And as you can see, now we can eat seahorses. Seahorse is going to be our new food. I keep. Losing one there because I'm not paying attention. But yeah, that's that is this game. It's I've already forgot the mini Nate game's name. But the map you as you saw before was pretty big. And it took me a while. I was still only had like three of the stones and I had 30 minutes in. So I could see this game taking quite a bit to get all the way to the end. Now one another big problem I have, and I can't really show it because of the way I'm recording, but is that hitting escape on the keyboard makes the window smaller. Right now I have it maximized. If you hit escape, it actually like makes the window small. Like guys, if you hit alt enter, I hate that. As a as a PC gamer, I absolutely despise that. I use escape to close out of menus and things like that. Hitting escape to minimize the window, it was driving me insane. Like I just hit it out of habit to get out of a map or something, and it would shrink the window. Maybe not everybody has that issue, but it drives me nuts when a PC game does that. Uh, cause, because universally, escape means open a menu or close the menu that you're currently in, or untarget or, or whatnot. But so let me, we're, now, now to get back to the main application, you do have to close this application and go back. There's no way, as far as that I could find, to go from here back to the launcher app that has all the apps. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I closed that application because each game is its own application, right? So I had to close that one. So that was Super Clue Land. Next, we are gonna move to End of Line. Now, End of Line is an interesting puzzle game with an interesting 
uh, mechanic. Let's go ahead and click it. Guy reminds me of a, a Mega Man or kind of a blue Iron Man. We're gonna go ahead and just do new game on this one, and it will wipe my save, that's fine. Now, this one was frustrating because a lot of these games give you absolutely no direction at, at the beginning. And honestly, that I really don't like using, oh, well, it's retro as a excuse not to at least give a basic understanding on what the hell is going on. So I actually had to look online to figure out what I was supposed to do here because you can't go anything. These are spikes and you just die every time. Now, <laughs> I don't know. I had a bad, must have had just a bad luck because if you hit, where is it? There is a button. Okay, start resets the map. Because this is one of those puzzle games where sometimes you can get to a position where the puzzle's unwinnable, so you just need to reset it. So I have nothing I can do, but you'll notice when he, he, I die, he reses me, and then he comes back over here, and then, you know, he just keeps resing me and landing here. So all you actually have to do is kill yourself, and then kill that little resy guy, and then kill yourself again. And then you move to the next stage. The premise in a nutshell here is that those guys and other robots will bring you back to life if you die. However, if there's nothing to repair you, or bring you back to life, in other words, then you move on to the next stage. Does that make sense? So we're gonna move the box up and we're gonna die. See, oh, see he's gonna res us over here. So we are gonna come here and kill him, which I find, I find that interesting that to beat the stage, you have to kill the robot that's trying to help you. So we're gonna kill ourselves, and since there's nothing to res us, we'll move on to the next stage. This is probably my favorite game of the pack that I've played. I found the, most of the time the puzzles were pretty easy, but they were fun. So as we're kind of stuck here. We can't really move this box back to any, any real avail here, but if we push this button, we see that, oh, those bars drop. So let's kill ourselves and we res over here. So now we can push this box on this button kill this guy and then kill ourselves and move on to the next stage. We'll do one or two more of these. I think you get the premise. Like I say, I think it's a very interesting premise and the puzzles have been interesting, if not pretty darn easy up to this point, but they've been enjoyable to do nonetheless. So not necessarily challenging, but quite fun. We're gonna kill him now. We'll do one more. Again, it doesn't take long to understand the premise once you kind of get it, but there's interesting variations that, again, make this probably my favorite game in the, in the group. So this drops the the door, so we're gonna let him hop on over there. And we can see, oh, that opens and closes the doors. So what we're gonna do this time is when he goes across, we're gonna lock him on, head on over. So what happens if we kill him? Oh, looks like one of these guys will come and res him. Now we can't kill those while they're in the air. So we're gonna hop in here, kill both of these guys, come back out. But, that, but if we try to kill ourselves here, this guy will also res us. However, another thing to keep in mind is those little flying robots will res each other. They will res any robot that dies. This little guy here, however, will only res you, as far as I can tell. So now we're gonna kill him. How dare he try to help us kill ourselves and we move on to the next stage. So yeah, not a whole lot to show there, but again, I found it enjoyable. They'll, these guys also fix these little machines here. And you'll notice as well, that he, they will always go to the closest, I guess, station, if you want to call them that. So we, to get him over here, we had to destroy this. And since this station was closer, he landed there. So we kill him, kill ourselves, and move on. Keeping in mind, these early stages are, are even easier than the normal ones because they're trying to show you the, the variation on the mechanic. Again, simple premise, but I found it, uh, I found it used quite enjoyably. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game. All right, let's move on to Gaia Attack. This is a, like an action beat em up up scroller. Go ahead and get her started here. You can do co some of these matches do have co-op. I haven't tried any of those, but um, we're gonna just go with Vert as our name. It shows you the stage. And I, the premise here, I guess, is you're trying to kill these eco-terrorists. At least that's that's my take on it. I don't know if that's actually how it happens. But these guys are bad guys. These little Taurus-looking things. You can also sh knock them into the, the barrels, and that hurts them a lot. And you can see that we're getting combos. Oops. 
So you want to kind of crank it up with the combos. I, I, I'm assuming you get more points the more the higher the combo goes. I've gotten to about 20. And I this is these basically work in phases. So this phase I need to kill as many enemies as is well I need to kill all the enemies on the stage in order to progress. There's just this one guy here. We can pounce on his head and knock him into the barrels. Now in the spines or whatever it is, there's always something at the bottom of the stage that will come up once you've killed all the enemies. Uh, once that's coming up, you don't need to kill them all. But I do it anyway. Now what those gold things are, I don't know. These little pagoda type things, I don't know what those, I have no idea what that actually is supposed to be. I think I get what it's supposed to be, but I don't know the name of it. Our waypoint. So if I die, I will return at that waypoint. Let's go and destroy this evil machinery. Apparently. That's kind of why I've gotten the, the idea that the premise is that you're... You're killing these creatures that are attacking the environment. If that's actually... I have no idea if that's actually what's happening or not. I just forgot the... Did I, yeah, I did give the name of this one. At the beginning. We'll, we'll finish this stage and that'll be all we need to see for this one. The bosses are pretty darn easy in, in this one. Uh, they I've only fought... Well, I've only fought two of them, to be fair. But they seem to be pretty similar. These guys do drop hot, hearts sometimes. And as you can imagine, those hearts will heal you. I'm going to grab this immediately. And as you progress through the stages, you get different types of enemies. And like at one stage, you get some kind of hand glider type enemy. Which can be quite annoying. I'm trying to keep my combo going. Get as many points as I can. I still wish I could. I'm trying to figure out what these little gold things do. Because you can see I've gotten three. Like there's a limit of three. But I've hit that limit. And I have no idea what it what that what that does. You can destroy these barrels, they don't hurt you. But I think they either do more damage to enemies than normal, or they kill them outright with one hit. You can also attack these guys while they're still floating down if you want to play dirty. And of course, if you or the enemies hit the thorns, it's instant death. Now let's talk about the graphic style, since we got a little wait ways to wait for the to stage to pump come up. Anyone who's watched my channel for any length of time knows that I'm pretty much over the whole pixelated graphics thing. However, I don't really found it to be found found it found it to be too offensive here. I guess it's the style, kind of the old school arcadey uh, pack of mini games. I guess I so I find it less offensive. <laughs> not offensive is not the right word to use there. I find it less. Hmm. I am more okay with it. Let's just put it that way. Let's destroy this ore rig. I don't know if you actually have to destroy these, but I do it anyway. Oh, let's avoid the shots. Let's run face first into the shots after I said let's avoid the shot. Wonderful. Let's grab this heart. And after these guys drop off, we can actually oh, jump on the rope. Now, of course, after I've said the boss is easy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. Go ahead and get that waypoint. They're pretty easy to keep these guys in a combo, especially if you get him in the corner. And eventually, though, he will just kind of hop up top and summon his minions because he's too afraid to do the dirty work himself. And they do vary it up. Like the next boss, you always have to jump on his head first. But for the most part, they've been pretty easy. But again, I've only really done two of the bosses. There's only one attack, as you can imagine. I'm just spamming, well, square, since I'm using the PS4 controller. But anyway, going back to the graphics, again, I don't find it as bad because of the style of game, I guess. Uh, it's not as, I don't again, I don't know what the word, maybe not annoying may not be the word, right word, but less of a put off, let's put it that way, than, than I normally would. Would I rather it look like something else? Absolutely. But again, for the style they're going for, I think it's all right. Uh, the music is pretty good. The chiptune type music they're going with, I, I think it's actually quite good uh, for the most part. You also pick different, uh, you're, you actually Go with different types of heroes on different stages, I've noticed. And you'll see that we're fighting some of the hand glider enemies here that we have to look out for. But yeah, that's all I'm going to show you of this game. I want, if you do pick this up, I want you to uh, be surprised by what's coming. I don't want to ruin all the, all the suspense. And I think that's all you really need to know as far as how this basic, this game plays in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and hop back out to the menu. All right, up next is Paradox Lost. 
Now, this one is a Metroidvania style game, which I'm sure some of you are jumping at the chance to try. We'll go ahead and continue in this case, because progress is kind of important. Now, in this game, I've picked up two different weapons so far. I've got this Ice Beam, which if I can find an enemy, I can ice them and show you. I've also got a Slide Attack. And then, keep in mind, these are upgrades I've picked up out over time. Just starting off, you can pretty much only jump. You don't even have a gun. But eventually, you do pick up the gun, you get, this, you get a slide, and then you get a slide attack. Uh, so you can shoot up, can't shoot down, you can only shoot left and right and up. As you can see, I froze this enemy that just happens to look like a platform. We're gonna hop on. And I know... Okay, yep, I'm gonna have to wait for it to, to fall. We also have another gun. That gun ties into the game's main, well, one of the game's main game mechanics, which is, which is time travel, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And hopefully we'll find something here shortly that will show that. But you see we can fry, freeze enemies and I can switch back and just blow them away. At the top left you can see my health. And we got... Block, blow up that block there. I like how your legs become like a wolf when you do that. So obviously we need to freeze these guys. And you do have a map. And you'll notice it's very broken up, right? It doesn't look like anything's connecting. Well, the main thing with this game, again, is the time travel. So you're gonna find these crystals, and hopefully I find one soon. Oh, shake it. Oh, I can duck it, right? You can duck as well. Is that, oh, there's a person I can save as well if I can get over there. Or I can just fall down here, that works too. But you find these crystals that you can shoot. Oh boy, how are we gonna get over there? But anyway, these crystals that you can shoot. Can get that, it's good. Eh, it actually wasn't bad as I, I made it out to be. But when they shoot these crystals, oh, here's one. Oh, oh, this is the time travel lady where I got the, the gun in the first place. Well, first off, they bounce your shots, which doesn't really hurt you, which is kind of nice. But if you charge it up and shoot it, well, that will freeze you. But if you use the correct gun and charge it up and let it go, you go to a different era. So you have the present. And the thing I don't quite get is how the maps coincide, because it seems like it's not just sending you to a different time, but it's also sending you to like a different area. So the idea partially is you're trying to find these folks and send them back to the past. And I think like where you get hit with the tr time travel beam seems to affect where you show up. Okay, it didn't work that time. Let's charge her up. Hmm. Let's just try doing it right here. All right, not really. Don't really know why it's not sending me back. Maybe. There we go. Ah, it's because I was in the wall. I get you. So there's not another crystal here. So I guess, I mean, I guess they could have removed the crystal, but yeah, it seems like where you are kind of dictates where you're going to show up in the different era. This is just a save spot. Interesting animation for saving there. And we'll go ahead and since there's not really a whole lot of options where to get shot here. Okay, I guess we're in the wall again. There we go. So you can see it's sort of kind of the layout's the same, but not really. So let's try to shoot this from over here and see what happens. So yeah, you're, so I think some puzzles you're supposed to shoot the crystals from different angles. So that you show up in different areas. Oop. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Okay. Nope, not fast enough. Alright, well let's just shoot him from right here. Nope, oh, it didn't really matter. So I'll play this a little bit longer. It's interesting. Uh, I'm just going to let him hit me. But obviously some serious Zelda influence here. The little guys that drop from the top. Uh, running around. Big map. Oh, those traps in the ground that I'm totally not paying any attention to. 
But need to say the time travel mechanic is a little different. Now, again, there's not a lot of choice where we can spawn there. Now, if I could have somehow spawned over there, that would have been nice. But yeah, I haven't quite figured out fully how the time travel stuff works. I should be able to kill him. Yeah. I haven't quite figured out how that's supposed to work yet. In some cases like that, there's not really a whole lot of options as to where you can spawn. So I've honestly gotten stuck where we are right now. Uh, I can still go down a bit, I suppose, and it looks like there's about some side room. No, that's a wall. Use our wolf legs to clear out these boxes. But yeah, there's definitely, if you, for those of you who want to run around and explore, there's definitely a lot of areas to explore on this. But like I say, the mechanic, the time mechanic, I kind of get. I mean, I understand that you shoot crystal and you either go back to the present. I think there's only the present, past, and the future. I mean, that would kind of make sense. It's another safe thing. We'll run around a little bit more. But again, for those of you itching for some kind of old school Metroidvania... Oh, wings. Got an upgrade. Nice. Paradox wing. Press Z in air to double jump. Ah, that could definitely come in handy. I like the effect, too. The effect for double jumping is pretty neat. The little wings that pop out is cool. I like that. Yeah, it definitely has that old school Metroid feel. I never played Castlevania uh, Symphony of the Night, which I know is probably discredits me from ever giving an opinion on a video game ever again, but what can I say? I, I didn't have that console when I was that, that age. You can also shoot to the boxes if they're above you. Let me pop over here real fast. So it's, it is fun to explore around, but then sometimes like this, like I don't quite know what this is about, but there's probably something hidden here. But yeah, this is, uh, I already forgot the name of this one too. I think it was Paradox, something Paradox. But uh, anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and head back to the menu and check out another game. And I meant to mention before, Paradox Lost and the Gaia Attack, both games are ones that I definitely would not rest, uh, some, I would not suggest playing with the keyboard. Partially because, again, they don't really show you what the keys do, and you basically just have to spam keys until you figure out what key, well, I think Paradox Lost does a better job of that. Gaia Attack, I pretty much just said to smash keys until I figured out what it was. It'd be nice if, if you won't let me rebind them, at least show me what they are, right? Let me bring, let me bring up a menu and show me, okay, attack is, you know, space bar and jump is control or whatever they are. So, just a suggestion, if you don't let me change the controls, please let me, uh, let me see what they are. This is Wub Wub Wescue. Uh, an interesting game where you play as a pug and you are trying to save someone, assumingly your master. Uh, I'm gonna just start from the beginning. And as always, we have to erase our save game, which is fine. This is a very interesting game. First of all, if you fall very far at all, you die. My number one complaint about this game, the fall distance is, is very, very, very low. And let's, you, these don't last very long, so you just gotta time it just right. And hop across. You can't far, fall very far, but you are a pug. Who can climb ladders? That's always handy. Of course, you have to look out for these arrows. Needed to say, arrows will kill you. Everything is a one-shot hit or one-shot kill, as far as I know. I don't know if the arrows are coming out the other side, but we're gonna hop on down here. The villagers are apparently terrified of a smiling, tong lolling pug. So we scare them away, but they just steal our master away to the next level. This game really reminds me of Donkey Kong Jr., I think it was, where you played the role of Donkey Kong Jr., and you were trying to save Donkey Kong, who had been kidnapped by the very evil Mario. And every time you get near the end, I forget there's a pattern there. Every time you get to the end, Donkey or Mario would take Donkey Kong to the next stage, just like Donkey Kong. Very simplistic patterns back in the day. So yeah, it reminds me a lot of that. I don't know why I think of it that way, because it also worked that way in Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong had taken the princess, and he would run away every time he got to the end of the stage. But for whatever reason, I guess it makes me think of Donkey Kong Jr. more than Donkey Kong. Go figure. Anyway, so... Next we have this new mechanic. We have this... This... Uh, record player. I forget the, the fancy smancy name. But when you hit it, it kind of locks you up for a second. And at the top, you get this little gold record. 
Now what that does, and again, it doesn't really explain this, you just kind of have to figure it out. It's, to be fair, it's not that hard to figure out either. As you hit a different button, you make it like sing a song and things go a lot, well, slightly slower. So this gives us more time to hop across and save our master. So obviously that's gonna play a pretty important part going forward. Let's go ahead and we'll do this maybe one more, two more stages depending. I had problems with the stage earlier. I think I've got it now since I figured it out. But this is an okay game. I'm not really not a fan of the incredibly short fall distance causing death. And some of the timing on this is pretty darn specific. There we go. That actually wasn't bad. We'll do one more stage. So this one's all right. Not a huge fan. I see how some people could enjoy it. But this one, again, didn't dis... I didn't hate it necessarily, but I wasn't really my, my cup of tea here. All right, so I think we have to crawl down here to get away across the snake because we can't jump high enough because we're a pug. Now, one thing that I find interesting, and I'll be quiet here in a second so you can notice this, is the music times with the platforms. So you'll notice it appears at certain beats. So we'll listen for a second. So you can see I've actually got my timing with the rhythm of the music. So I find that actually quite helpful. Now I could slow time here, but there's another one up top. So either way, I'm going to have to do this time. So oh, there's also another way you can do this. Let me show you the way. I think this is the way they intended you to do it. First, you get this. First off, I will say I also don't like having to sit there and wait for the for your dog to kind of get to the beat of the music, which I know it doesn't seem like much, but when you're doing it multiple times. Uh, it's also hard to talk because I can't or do this while I'm talking because I can't really listen to the music at the same time. Which is was my cue before. One one thing. Okay. Now what we could do is go this way, knock this ladder down, go across, and refill our, I guess. A gold CD bar so that we can time stop again and crawl over. Now, I didn't do this the last time. You can actually get across both of these if you time them correctly, but it's just easier if they're going in slow motion. And that's it for that stage. And I think that's going to be it for this. Uh, it's an interesting game. I could definitely see some folks enjoying it. Uh, just not necessarily my, my cup of tea, but the puzzles are kind of fun. Uh, just some of the mechanics uh, annoy me a bit. Now also, just to show you this real quick. This is a different one. You can notice it's green. There he goes. I wasn't quite on it enough. Now we can use this one to put the snakes to sleep. So I'm assuming there's going to be times where you need to combine the two. But anyway, yes, that's that game. Let's go ahead and hop on to the next one. Okay, again, that was Wub Wub Rescue. Next, the last game is Brains and Hearts. Now, this one's definitely different than the others, to say the least. This one's a card game. A card game, unfortunately, I'm not very good at, so that's not going to work well. Uh, you can also take this one solo or multiplayer, a versus match. Uh, we're going to just pick brains. I don't think it really matters. Uh, we'll have the help off, because I did play it before. We can also choose our music. I'll just pick one at random. So, here's how this one works. You have a deck of cards, and you have this dice roll. We're just going to use the deck of cards. That's what you should use most of the time. So you have a 5, 6, and a 2. I'm going to put the two down. I don't know how much difference it makes where, where you put the card. I don't think it does. Now I can lock or unlock this card. Here's how this game works in a nutshell. We're going to get numbered cards. And the goal is to get three cards in ascending order. So like two, three, four, right? And then let's say I've got a four that I could put down. I could put down the four and then I would get a two, three, four. And that means I would take one of his cards away from him. 
Obviously the same rules apply for him. If he put down the four instead of me, then he would take all these cards and he would put them into his hand, I guess. I don't know if it just goes to an empty pile or how, how that works exactly. I think it just works on like a score system. There's also warp cards. And I forget exactly how the warp cards work. I think they count for both less than two and greater than seven, something like that. It was kind of a wild card, but they're a warp card. Now he locked his card. What that means is, uh, see now if I put the four down, it won't count because I can't use it because he locked it. That just means it's locked for this round though. So what I'm going to do is I could say, well, I'll just put a five down. Well, the problem with that is that if, if I do that, he could actually put down a four and make two, three, four, five. And you could take as many cards as you can get in order. So let's say I had a, let's say I've got a five and a six on my row, right? And he puts down a four now. He would have two, three, four, five, six and take all those cards, which we obviously don't want. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a four down, but we're gonna lock it. That way he cannot use it in the sequence. Now he can still put a wild card or a warp card down. So he's gonna lock that. The only real negative to war to locking cards is that you cannot use them in a sequence either that round. So let's say I put a five down and locked it for some bizarre reason. I couldn't use it in this upcoming sequence. However, I am gonna put a five down and we're not gonna lock it. And we're going to use a T3-4. Actually, that doesn't really help us. If he had the five on his side, it would be more useful. I should have went... Well, I don't know if you can do a sequence at all if you lock a card. So if I would have locked the five, I don't know if it would allow me to do any sequence, even if it didn't involve the five. I'm not sure. I've not tried that yet. This is a pretty interesting, interesting game. We're gonna, I'm going to put the four down. Because that's going to make a 2-3-4. So I can take his card out of the action. But yeah, it's very interesting. It's, it's kind of fun. And we'll get to the dice in just a bit. Usually I only use the dice when I'm out of other cards. I don't know if that's optimal. It's probably not. But uh, we can do... I can do a three, but that'll be two, three, four on my own side. So I don't think that would really help us at all right now. So what I will do... Let's put a five down and lock it. I have a plan, but I don't think it's a very good one. I was kind of hoping he would put... Okay, he's just going to put a five. Okay. I should not... I should have actually... Hmm, oh, well. I should have used the dice. So, I can... And you put cards on top of each other. Which is interesting. I don't know exactly how that works either. So we have... Let's go ahead and put the three down. Let's do the three. Hmm. I don't know why they didn't work. Because he had a two and it wasn't locked. So I don't under... See, there are little things like that I don't understand. Like, why did that not work? Hmm. That was weird. All right. I obviously messed something up. So let's go ahead and we will flip a card. And we'll go with seven. Maybe he has to start it on his side. Okay, get okay, that is the case. I thought it was at all. Okay, so now we know it's too late now, I'm sure. That you could also see in the middle, there's some kind of a pink and green bar. I'm the more teal color. So I'm gonna guess that uh he's probably winning since there's more pink. So okay, I thought you could start the numbers at any side. Eh, let's go ahead and flip that over. Oh, we finally we got our first warp card. And we are actually going to throw this down. We should get the five, six, seven, I believe. Or not. Again, I forget what warp cards are. I think it's... I thought it was seven and up. So I don't know why we wouldn't have gotten credit for there. It could be, it could be eight and up. I'm not sure. Or maybe it just means higher than seven, which I guess would be eight and up. Uh, let's see, we'll go with five, six, seven. Now, with this definitely... Well, hmm... Yeah, I keep screwing myself here. I should do the... Oh, you got some really bad cards, but I'm doing bad orders, too. Wow, we just gets got terrible cards. Let's go ahead and roll the dice. Let's see what we get. 
So that means I can add or subtract a number from any of his cards. I'm gonna subtract. Wait, we're gonna add, I meant. So that's actually a three now. We're pretty much boned at this point. I don't really know how that helped him. And again, I don't know what the warp card stands for. Oh, it's right, it goes less than one. So one, two, three, all right. And then we can get the four and the five. Wow, that was actually pretty nice. We're not back in the game at all, but it worked out. And it was a complete and total accident, because I keep forgetting it must be less than two and higher than seven. That would make sense. So five, six, seven. Uh, doing a number change wasn't really would not really help us here. Wow, we just cannot get anything that's gonna help at all. Because if you put a six down, that's gonna help him. Let's just put a two, I guess. But yeah, not uh... okay. He's gonna warp it. So two. Well, see, no way. He started... I don't... See, I don't understand. I obviously missed some of the rules, because it wouldn't let me start a count on my side, but it let him start a count on his side. Maybe it was because it was a warp card? I don't know. But we'll guess we'll go ahead and finish this match, because it's almost over anyway. I'm just going to throw a three down. Just to kind of get this game over with. It's an interesting card game. I, I wish that there was somewhere I could just refer to the rules. Again just to make it a lot easier. Like, hit escape and show me what the rules are. Uh, wait, why was that? Hmm. Whatever, let's just pick one. I mean, locked it just to be a jerk, even though there's not really much he could do with it. So at this point, we're both out of cards, and he's just rolling because it's all he has now. It's a multiplication. I don't even know how that could have helped him. Let's just roll the dice. I think you only get two dice rolls. Oh, I guess it means you get you get nothing. So you both rolled an X and got nothing. Uh, I guess that's our only card. And again, I don't think it really matters where you put it. But yeah, we've we've lost this one very badly. But yeah, interesting card game. Again, I if I'd have changed anything, I would absolutely make it so I hit of escape, which definitely should not minimize the window. But it should open up like, okay, here's what the warp card does. Here's what the rules are. Just some kind of basic understanding. Like, I don't want to play through the tutorial again. But sometimes I will forget. Oh, what does the warp card do? Because I remember pretty much everything else except for how you can start. But I forget how the warp cards work. And I don't want to go through the entire tutorial just to learn that. But anyways, interesting, interesting little card game. I could see if you're looking for something to play in a, a quick session. It could be pretty interesting. But anyway, let's go and let's try out the very last game. Alright, last game is Shootin'. Now, this is probably my second favorite game. This is a... auto-scrolling... kind of a shoot-'em-up, but with a samurai. Kind of interesting. Uh, we can do a solo duo or erase my existing. We're not gonna erase. One thing I like about this game is that once you beat a stage, you can actually go back and play it again. That's pretty nifty. I very much enjoy that. And you can do that for money because there's a shop where you can buy various upgrades. I bought an upgrade so that I can take at least one hit on every stage, the, the helmet upgrade. But you can upgrade the various weapons. Let's see, this gives you an extra life for the stages. Uh, the shield, which will also give you a second hit, and it's permanent, but it's very expensive. 4,800, that's a lot of gold. So that is the, the shop. Let's hop into a stage real quick. Um, let's start with the easy ones. We'll go with peaks midday. Now I have a basic kind of attack. Not uh, not that not that good. You got to be right in their face. That's the money for the game. Not that great. However, if I hold it, I can charge and I can actually jump onto an enemy, and I can steal their attack. Which is, uh, I still have my sword attack if I want to use it, but I have these arrows which. I don't know if they're looping or if they're heat-seeking. Yeah, it seems like they're heat-seeking. Now, every enemy has a different attack. So I can hold the attack and jump on this guy. Oh, now I've just got a regular straight attack. 
I really like that. It's an interesting mechanic. And it lets me kind of pick what weapons I want as long as, you know, that enemy is on the stage. Sometimes in the I like certain weapons, but that enemy isn't on the stage, so I can't use it. Or maybe the enemy that has the weapon I really like doesn't appear very often. One other interesting side mechanic, or at least one that it seems I've noticed, is that some packs of enemies work such that if you kill all the enemies in that pack, you get the most money. So you'll notice there, every last enemy I killed was the one who dropped the big piles of loot, just like that one. And if I can actually kill all these, which it looks like I'm going to fail on, we'll get the same thing. Now, I am having to pre or prettily press the button, so those of you who get sore fingers might have problems. You can hold it, but it shoots a lot slower, and I'll show you that once I take one of these guys' power. So you notice it shoots. That's me holding the button, and that's me just pressing it. So you can press and hold, but it's going to go shoot slower. So it's it's an interesting trade-off. I can see why some people don't like auto-shoot. I feel like it cheapens, I guess, the experience in some way. But let's be honest, you're just mashing a button over and over and over. It's not a big deal. So here's our first boss. It's just a big wolf. This guy's super easy. You can actually shoot enemies' reflection or projectiles back at them with the sword, which is awesome. I always love shooting enemy projectiles back. The enemies are coming along the side. They're not really a real threat. I think mostly they're there so that if you lose your weapon, you can uh, basically absorb the weapon back from them. So we're just going to keep hitting him. And I think you can both reflect and shoot your regular weapon at the same time, sort of. You can see this guy is very easy. This stage is listed as one star. So it starts you off very, very slow. I have run into a boss that I had problems with and haven't been able to beat yet, but honestly it's less the boss and more that I keep losing all my health before I really get a chance to learn his patterns. That's one thing that's was, been annoying to me so far is on that one stage I'm talking about, I end up losing all my lives but one. Oh, I didn't know he would jump all the way down. Lose all my lives but one. So by the time I actually get to the boss, I've only got like one chance to learn his pattern. So I always, and since you insta-die without a helmet, it's very easy to to die before you've really learned his pattern. So I don't really like that, but that's kind of a, I guess an aspect of the shoot em up type, type of game. I think it's, in, I like the mechanic. I like the, like stealing the enemy's abilities to power your own weapons. We'll go ahead and do another stage real quick, or at least part of a stage. Again, you see we have ninjas here. Now these guys have one of the better attacks, I think. So let's steal it. It's ninja stars, but the nice thing is it shoots two ninja stars behind you. So in a case like this, where you're trying to move up, you can use that to kill the enemies. Now you can also power up these various weapons in the shop. So if there's one type of enemy that you're running into a lot, or maybe if you're stuck on a stage, and it has a certain type of enemy, you can pay to upgrade that weapon. So I could definitely see upgrading the ninja stars. And the money will disappear, so you want to try to get to the top and grab it. And just hope the enemy doesn't spawn right as you're grabbing it, which would be most unfortunate. Luckily, I don't think I've died like that somehow yet. The little beep 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 sound you get when you attack is can definitely be annoying. Oh, that was very, very close. Spamming the button for the win. At the bar, a bar pops up at the top sometimes. I think that's like a waypoint telling me I've reached a waypoint. So if I die, I'll resurrect at that waypoint, which is nice. I like the game as waypoints. Frankly, if it did not, I would like it much, much less because I have very little. I'm not a big shoot 'em up fan, period. And if I would have had to start at the beginning of the stage every single time, I'd be very annoyed. Now, you do have lives. You can see at the bottom left, I have. It shows my weapon, it shows how many upgrades it has, which is just the one star, which means I haven't upgraded it at all. You can also see my lives, which kind of looks like a bracelet or a scroll. And then, of course, the little pile of money there. The 8-bit pile of money is obviously my money. So we've taken out his one eye. You can see, again, see the enemy's boss meter at the top. Just dodge these bullets. Not too difficult. He's blinded, so he can't really... He can shoot more often now, but he can't really see you. Honestly, this is where it gets super easy, because you don't have to move much. Of course, I say that as I move a whole lot. So yeah, another easy boss, but again, keep in mind this was a, like a, a one-star stage, which I'm assuming means difficulty, because uh, the higher level stages do seem to be 
more difficult. Or maybe that's just... Let me check something. No, the... It shows the river as being a one star. And that was markedly more difficult. Not way more difficult, but a, a little bit. And I don't know what... Oh, I see. If you go to each stage, it'll show you what weapons you've picked up. Because before I had noticed on one of these, like, I think it was this one, where it had, like, the little bell-looking thing, the ninja star, but then it had a question mark. The question mark means there's another weapon there that you haven't picked up. But then once you've unlocked the weapon, you can go to the shop, and you can upgrade it. Now, again, keep in mind, you only want to upgrade weapons that you think you're going to be using. So I can't get this arrow weapon unless those cloud enemies are on that stage. Again, as far as I know. Extra lives aren't too expensive. So it might be worth your while if you're having trouble with stage like I am with the river stage to kind of get those extra lives so that you can learn the patterns of the bosses and what have you. And some of the weapons are, are very interesting. Like this one I like. The mace will, it like swings around you so you can kind of use that to ram into the enemies. And then you can throw it like if you time it correctly, kind of like throwing Bowser by the tail in Mario 64. Now, I really like that weapon, but there's very, very, I've only seen like two enemies that drop it, like two enemies on an entire stage. So it's pretty rare, but it's really, really sweet once you get it. So I really want to upgrade it. So yeah, this game is, I would definitely say this is my second favorite game uh, on the list. But yes, this has been Retro Game Crunch. Again, it is $14.99. It's going to be on Steam as of this recording. It's not. It's been greenlit, so it's going to be there. I don't know what date it'll be there. But, like I said, you can buy the game on the developer page, DRM free. And you might want to... I checked their page. I couldn't find any information about getting Steam keys once it's released if you buy it on the page. A lot of developers will do that. So that if you buy the game on the dev page and then once it goes on Steam, they'll email you your key. So check with them on that. Uh, you might want to go ahead and pick it up now and then just redeem your key later or not if you don't really care if it's on Steam. Again, it is available on PC and the Mac. There is controller support. I played some of the... I think probably most of the games are playable with the, the keyboard and mouse, but some of them definitely feel like you're going to have a much better time if you use the controller. So thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Please leave comments in the description below. Let me what you think of this video. And if you've tried the game, let me know what you've tried or what you think of the game itself. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you next time. Step back, though. We are getting this I, worked I do hate up you, about a mobile game. I, mean, I do hate you, though. <laughs> I want to be 100% clear with a moment of seriousness. I hate your guts.